Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic of the frequency distribution that is shape of the data. So we can measure shape of the data by using two parameters skewness and kurtosis. So yes, today's topic of discussion is skewness and kurtosis. Before discussing about skewness and kurtosis, we should first understand briefly what is normal distribution. So to brief, normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve which is symmetric around the central line. Here you can see that our data is symmetric or our distribution is symmetric around the central line. And in normal distribution, mean is always equal to median is always equal to mode. Okay, so now come to the main topic which is skewness and kurtosis. So first we will discuss about the skewness. What is the concept of skewness? When our data is not normally distributed, it is shifted towards the right or the left. Then we say that uh, we have a um, we have a skewed data. Okay, so just one minute. Yeah, so here we can see that this blue curve is not a normal distribution because this is a skewed curve. It's not a symmetric bell shaped curve like a green curve here green curve indicates the normal distribution while blue and the red curves in doesn't indicate the normal distribution so they are skewed okay so skewness can be of two types as here you can see that we have two kinds of skewness one is shifted to towards the right and the other curve is shifted towards the left so on the on this base we have two kind of skewness the first one is positively skewed data so if suppose we have outliers on the right hand side like here we have very few observations on the right hand side and that is why this data is skewed towards the right so in this scenario mean will be always greater than the median than the mode okay why why mean is greater because we already studied that mean is much affected by extreme values so if we have extreme values towards the right then mean shift mean will shift towards right that is why mean will be greater than median and then mode Similarly, for negatively skewed data, we have uh, this time we have uh, smaller values at the left hand side. So, mean will shift towards left hand side. So, in this case, mean is always less than the median and then the mode. So, this is negatively skewed data. Okay. So, to summarize, positively skewed data has a long tail in a positive direction and it is skewed to the right it's one example can be suppose in a society of 100 flats 99 were sold out in between 1 to 5 crore while one was sold out for 10 crore so here 10 crore will be the outlier and it's a higher value so our mean will shift towards the right hand side and this will be a positively skewed data And for negatively skewed data, it is a long tail in negative direction. Here you can see that the long tail is in negative direction. And this is skewed to the left. Its example can be grade of students. Like in an exam, most of the students pass with a good exam. Only a very less scored, the less marks. So here, this can be one of the example of negatively skewed data. Now the next question is how we can measure skewness. So we can measure skewness by Pearson first coefficient or Pearson second coefficient. The formula is um, formula for Pearson first coefficient is equal to mean minus mode divided by standard deviation and it lies between minus 1 to plus 1. If this coefficient comes out to be 0 that means our data is symmetric otherwise this is skewed data. If uh, it is greater than 0, then this is positively skewed. If it is less than 0, then our data is negatively skewed. Now, if we replace the formula uh, of um, mode, like mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean, we will get Pearson second coefficient. 
so pearson second coefficient is equal to 3 times mean minus median divided by standard deviation so again the interpretation will be same if it is zero then it indicates symmetric data if it is greater than zero then it is positively skewed if it is somewhere between 0 to 0 0.5 we can say almost symmetrical but if it is greater than 0 0.5 then we will say directly say that it is a positively skewed data similarly if it is between 0 to minus 0 0.5 then this our data is almost symmetrical but if it is more than minus 0 0.5 then sorry less than minus 0 0.5 that means if it is going towards left, then we will say our data is negatively skewed. Alright. Now the next topic which is kurtosis. For kurtosis, again your green curve represents the normal distribution. Kurtosis means when we are comparing the peakness of the data, peakness of the normal data as compared to our data. So in this case, Green curve indicates the normal distribution, while blue is the lactocurtic and red one is the platycurtic. So, the data which has peakness more than the normal data set is known as lactocurtic, and the data which has peakness less than the normal distribution is known as platycurtic data. Okay. So, kurtosis measures the peakness of the curve of the distribution. It compares the shape of the peak to the shape of the peak of a bell-shaped normal distribution. So, kurtosis can also be of two types, laptocurtic and platycurtic. In laptocurtic curve, sharper rising center peak than the peak of a normal distribution. It is known as positive kurtosis. That means kurtosis value will be greater than zero for laptocurtic data. Here you can see. Okay. Higher concentration of values near the mean of the distribution as compared to the normal distribution. So again, you can see in this graph, in this figure, that uh, in laptocurtic curve, the peakness is more than the normal distribution. So normal is also known as mesocurtic. So, because the concentration is more here, that means what? That means concentration of values near the mean of the distribution is more as compared to the normal distribution. Similarly, for platycurtic curve, platycurtic means the one which has peakness less than the normal distribution. In this figure, the red curve is platycurtic curve. Okay. So, it has negative kurtosis, kurtosis value is less than 0 and lower concentration of values near the mean of the distribution as compared to the normal distribution. Okay, so we can uh, use, uh, we can measure kurtosis by the coefficient of kurtosis or by excess kurtosis. So, excess kurtosis is nothing but kurtosis minus 3. Okay, so if we are using excess kurtosis, we compare it with zero. And if we are using simply coefficient of kurtosis, then we compare it by the number three. So if kurtosis is equal to three, then it indicates mesocurtic or normal distribution. If it is greater than three, then it indicates lactocurtic distribution. And if it is less than three, then it indicates platycurtic distribution. Okay, so these are very good reference on the topic. If you want to read more about it, please go through this uh, study materials. If you have any doubt, please feel free to connect. I will be happy to answer all your queries. Uh, in next video, we will discuss about how we can compute skewness and kurtosis in Excel. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.